Dear God, we thank you for filling us up with the spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving for all you do for us each and every day. Amen. Mother Claire began, Lord, I am a little fuzzy. Yes, I can see that. Just push on through. I don't know what to do about my appetite. It has to be a decision you can stick with, Jesus continued. If you reach too high, you will fail. If you don't reach at all, you will fail. Ask for help. Do not get stuck on this now. We can go deeper later. Part of it is the craving of your body. I know you don't want to give in to it, but you are in a dilemma. It is going to take grace. More grace. This is not something you can conquer on your own, no matter how lofty are your intentions. But with my help, nothing is impossible. As you navigate through these times, beloved, be aware, always, that there is help available. I have not left you on your own, but you must reach out for that help with a sincere heart and intention to conquer your flesh. I wish I could tell you that fasting is not necessary, but I can't. There is much to conquer in your flesh, and that is a starting point. However, if you concentrate too much on your fault, it will become a monster. All of this attention must shift to my holy face and will for you. Then you will have something solid to stand on in the midst of your trials. Think about pleasing me. Think about nourishing your flock. Think about the eternal consequences of not getting your flesh under control. Then come to me with true contrition, and I will help you. Please help me, Lord, to be really contrite. Claire, I love you so much, and I only want what is best for you. But you are weak, and I do take that into consideration. I also take into account the love and mercy you show to those around you. That is more important to me than all the fasts in the world. But if you hate yourself for your weakness, it will be harder for you to love others. If you see yourself in my mirror, you will see and wonder with incredulity how in the world you could ever even fast from one sweet, let alone a whole season of self-denial. Do you feel better? Yes, Lord. Much better. The blondies really help. Jesus continued, I know your motives are partially good. I think you need to get past this difficult season to have more self-control. The business of the community is very taxing, and when problems arise, you have no idea how much you are drained in that process. That is in part what is going on here. The sweets are covering for some very draining events of late. It will take a while for you to get back on your feet. So at this time, I say to you, moderation. That is the least you can do. Eat what is necessary to boost your system, then leave off with it. I am speaking to all of you, my brides. There is no easy way out of abstinence and self-denial. It is a cross, which I will assist you with when you call for help. But you must do the hard, hard work of denying yourself when cravings come up. Certainly try to satisfy your body's needs with healthy food and perhaps medicine. But self-denial is still a challenge to your willpower and flesh. If it becomes toxic, such as ugliness coming out of your heart because of your craving, it is better to take care of the need than to injure others. Some of you are older, such as Mother Claire. In that case, self-denial can be more difficult. 
I take all of this into consideration. I really do. There are no requirements for fasting if you are over your 50s or if you have any long-standing illnesses. These are constraining circumstances where you must apply wisdom and certainly provide for extraordinary needs. I look upon your hearts, my brides. I look there and wait to see how you are treating others. How do you think of your brothers and sisters? Are you merciful and kind? Or staunch and demanding, leaving no room for the weaknesses of others? Mercy always trumps rules and regulations. Remember how the apostles ate from the grains in the field on the Sabbath because they were hungry? May God help you never to become like the Pharisees of those days. Do your best, but love one another more than any penance or sacrifice. On this alone, you can make it to heaven. And that was the end of his message. Well, dear ones, the fact is, I was getting very weak and ended up breaking my abstinence for now. I had been struggling with very, very low energy for weeks, so I made some brownies with almond butter and dark chocolate chips and ate some of those. My energy went sky high and I got lots done. The next day, I also ate these while finishing off an exceedingly hard organizing job, which I had been walking around for two weeks. It looks like I'm not going to be able to abstain the way I want to during Lent because I have some deep computer organizing to do as well as my husband's room. But I will share with you when I have the grace to get back into a more Lenten diet. What I am focusing on, though, is refusing to criticize or complain about anything or anyone. This alone is a very substantial exercise to clean out my heart of murmuring. Dear God, deliver me from this terrible scourge of complaining. There is a direct correlation between fasting, low energy, and complaining. So for now, I am focusing on my heart and mind to be pleasing to the Lord. I pray that all of you will be comforted by my weakness and know that God can use us anyway, but he hates murmuring and loves thanksgiving. So that will be my fast, at least for now, until I can get the strength to deny my appetite as well. God bless you, dear ones, and thank you for your prayers and support. This promises to be a challenging spring. May the Lord bless you with the most wonderful graces and his tender love.